BMWs have the strangest problems, things that really make you pull your hair out. Let's find out what that is on this car. Let's get started. So this is a 2012 BMW 535i xDrive. You guys saw in a recent video, actually just the video we just did, that this is definitely one of the ones not to buy. And you will see that as we take a look at this car. The customer was actually driving not too far from here and realized his engine was overheating. He pulled over, turned it off, realized, you know, something's wrong. But he needed to move the car, or whatever reason, just a small distance, so he tried to start it. Nothing. It's dead. The tow truck came. The tow truck people are like, we need to get this vehicle started or so we can get it into neutral or do something. And it doesn't even try to start. It doesn't do anything. It's really, really strange how all this happened. But we already have looked this over. We've got it kind of figured out. We're going to wait on the customer and see what they want to do. But let's dive in and find out what exactly happened here. Let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. So here we have the three liter twin power turbo inline six. And the main complaint was that it, he noticed it was overheating. When it first came into the shop, we had to put it on these little dollies to move it around because you can't get it out of park until the engine's running. And it's not running, it won't run. We did figure out a way to get it into neutral. I'll show you that here in a minute. But we removed the reservoir cap. I just came out of my office. Magic Mike was looking at this, and I opened the cap, and I said, well, well, yeah, the coolant's all gone. It's full right now, but it was empty at the time. And Magic Mike said, well, why don't you look behind you? There's a trail. And you can see the trail that it left behind, coolant all over the place. So obviously, it's overheating because it lost its coolant. We saw the trail all over the ground from the tow truck. So we're gonna play the game again. I'm gonna list three items that it could be and you guys can let us know in the comments what you think it is. Is it A, the water pump gave out? B, did the coolant reservoir burst? C, did a coolant hose come loose? I'll let you guys choose. Now I don't know what it is about BMWs and losing coolant and locking up the engine, which we'll show you here in a minute. This one's not locked up. Luckily, so luckily. But there are so many stories about I overheated my engine, coolant was everywhere, and the engine was trashed. I've heard that at least 500 times. It seems like. Obviously it's not been 500 times, but it sure feels like it on BMWs. Let's go ahead and lift this thing up in the air and take a look at what we found. Where did the coolant come out of? So we got it up in the air. We pulled off all these little fiber panels and everything that are on the bottom. We started looking around. We looked at the water pump area. We looked at the reservoir, the radiator area. And it was all dry over in this area. But what we found was in the upper right corner, it was coolant everywhere. And there's a little cooler right here. You can see this hose that goes snakes around and it goes to this little cooler. This hose was dangling down to here. All the antifreeze in this car went onto the ground. It blew its own little connector off. There was, the little metal clip wasn't fully seated. I don't know sure what happened there. We got a new clip on it and it's holding well now. It's not coming off. But that is just so strange in itself. The strangeness doesn't stop there. But before we dive into the next issue that we found, let me show you how you get one of these into neutral. In the 2011 year, there was a little red plastic thing that was in your emergency toolkit that you could do and get it up there by the, the shifter, actually. You could get it in neutral. In 2012, they deleted that. It's gone. You have to get under the car and let me show you. Now keep in mind this thing's only six inches off the ground when it's on the ground. But there is only one way to get these models into neutral and only one way alone. 
There is a little five millimeter Allen screw right here next to this drive shaft and you can see that it pushes up on a lever, a steel lever right there. Once you turn that all the way up and push that lever up, now it's in neutral. Yes, that is really how you get one of these into neutral. You have to crawl under your car and do that. And the tow truck driver is going to be pissed off at you because your car just won't roll. It won't move. There's no magic tricks inside the interior. It has to be done right there. That's insane. This adds to one of the reasons why I said don't do the X drive, but just like I mentioned in the previous video, here's our little transfer case right here. There's the little drive shaft that goes up to a differential, which is right next to the oil pan, like right in it. You can see the CV shaft here goes all the way across through the oil pan, through the middle of the oil pan, and then to the differential, which is on the other side of the engine. I mentioned these things are always leaking oil. Look right there oil. So it didn't disappoint, did it? It's exactly as I said it would be. They always leak oil. There's X-Drive problems. They have coolant problems. Exactly as I said it would be. Unfortunately, that's just the life of BMW. I'm not bashing the customer. I'm not bashing their car. You just have to kind of look at some of the realities of some of these things. But that's not all. The strangeness still is not over. Let's get this thing back on the ground. Now I mentioned this engine possibly could have been locked up. Magic Mike did get a large breaker bar onto the main pulley and it spins over easy. It is so lucky that the engine is not locked up. We did pull all the spark plugs. There's no coolant in the cylinders or anything bad like that. So I think that they got by okay on the engine. But here's the strange thing. As this coolant issue happened, at the same time, the engine quit starting. And I thought maybe it's overheat, locked up, or it could be the computer, it could be wiring, it could be this or that. But let me show you what it was. Let's get the hood open again. So we'll get this open. I'll put my test light. Here, underneath this panel, there's this group of wires here. And this big, fat, white one is the starter wire to tell it to have a starter signal. I'll put that in there. And Daniel, go ahead and try to start it. So the computer, the relays, the intelligent battery module, everything is telling it to go ahead and start the engine. This is, should be the starter running. It, there's power there. It's signaling, please turn the starter over. As you can hear, nothing is turning over. So I saw right there, this engine should be turning over. But let's go ahead and go back to the trunk and show you some other things that I tested as well. So Magic Mike has been in here testing. This is one of the intelligent battery monitor deals that are on the negative terminal. We checked all these fuses. Checked a lot of the connections that are in here. We also pulled this panel off over there where the fuse box is and checked relays. There's terminal 30 and terminal 15 some deals that could cause it to not start, but everything checked out good. Everything's good here, everything's good here. And the proof of that is that it is actually actively trying to start the car. It's sending the signal to the starter, please turn over, but it's not. So let's go back to the engine bay. So I did some testing right at the starter. There's power going to it from the main battery cable. Also, just like you saw, the signal is getting to the starter to tell it to turn over. It's the starter solenoid. The starter itself has failed. So you can see this battery cable here it follows down. It actually goes underneath the intake. And it is so hard to get to, you can't even see it. And to change it out, the entire intake has to come off. How in the world does that happen? Even I am baffled. Your coolant hose blows, possibly locking up the engine, but it didn't, luckily. The coolant is missing. What does that have to do 
with a starter died at the exact same time. How? I even explained this to the customer and they were baffled. They almost didn't believe me until I went through all of the rigmarole of telling what we tested, what we found. And afterwards he was like, how does this happen? He said, I get the, the coolant thing. What, how does this happen with the starter? I'm like, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me either. It's easy to think that coolant may have sprayed everywhere and damaged something, but it didn't. It just leaked out of that corner straight to the ground. The customer never knew. They never saw steam or anything to indicate they lost coolant because it was straight to the ground. They never knew until the gauge warned them that something was wrong. The real kicker here, and I feel really sorry for this customer, and this is one of the reasons why I hate BMWs. Because this guy's a really nice guy. He's a very good gentleman. We're getting into the holidays. This is the last thing he needs right now. My coolant hose blew, my engine almost overheated, and at the same time my starter died, and the starter itself, just the starter, cost $1,200 to replace it. With the labor and the starter and everything, just the starter to get replaced alone. That doesn't include the coolant hose and the coolant and the diagnosis. Just the starter, $1,200. There you got the five hours of labor at $150 an hour. That's what we charge on these. And the starter itself is three, $400. And you had sales tax, which no one ever thinks about. $1,200. That's not the gut punch, though. I'm not even there yet. The gut punch is we might install the starter to find out your engine's toast. What do you do now? I could do some testing, I could do compression tests, I could do some various things, and it could add up to $500 worth of testing to figure out if his engine is good. Really what needs to be done is we need to get the starter replaced. I cannot verify the operation of this engine in operating conditions, listening to the timing chain running, listening to all these other things running, until we fix the starter. So I explained to the customer, you gotta have to replace the starter. We have 300 into doing all the diagnosis and digging. It'll be an additional 1200 to replace the starter only to find out your engine is trashed from overheating it. And it's the holidays. I do not like these cars because of what it does to my customers. They don't deserve this. So he's going to call us back and let us know what he wants to do. We'll figure out, is he just going to get rid of it? It has high miles. It has 200,000 miles on it. How much money is it worth putting into? I don't know. That'll be determined what they come up with. The customer did let me know that that's just definitely not what they wanted to hear right now, and I fully get it. I understand. I agree. I don't like delivering that news, especially around the holidays, but it sucks. So we found out why it overheated. We got that fixed, only to find out the most expensive problem has nothing to do with the cooling system. It's the starter, won't even start the engine. I did contact Johnny and ask him, how did the starter fail? What do you think happened here? And what I mean by Johnny is the car ninja. You guys know the car ninja on Hoovy's garage. I was like, how did this happen? The customer wants to know, I would like to know. He said, wizard, he says, I do one or two of these starters every week, all the time, 52 weeks a year. They fail, they drop like flies. And I did check on my supplier who gives me starters and parts for BMWs and things. I expected to see four or five of them in stock. I saw 70 in stock, 70 starters. I never even knew that was a problem with these. And it just so happened exactly when the coolant hose blew. Weird. This is really weird. So again, I feel really sorry for the customer. I'm not bashing the customer. I'm bashing the scenario that this car has put him in. It's not fair. He doesn't deserve it. It really sucks. But we'll wait for his phone call and see what we're going to do with it. And until that time, if you're curious what kind of tools we use to figure out what's wrong with this car, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. 
and make sure to hit the subscribe button because there is many more cool videos to come. We've got so much more North Star coverage, things to do on that. Don't buy an X drive. Thanks for watching.